Today in our 2009 Honda Fit, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Kurt Class 1 trailer hitch receiver, part number C11064. This is what our hitch looks like when it's installed. The cross tube is visible with this hitch. However, the hitch does sit nice and tucked in underneath the bumper fascia, so you're not going to have to worry about hitting your legs or shins on it when loading and unloading the vehicle. It's going to be a Class 1. It's going to be inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. Your hitch pin hole is going to be half inch in diameter. As you can see, it's going to have a reinforced collar, give you a little extra stability on your receiver tube. It's going to have ring style safety chain loops, give you plenty of room for different size safety chain hooks. As you can see, it also comes with a hitch pin and clip. You're going to have a 200 pound max tongue weight, which is a downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube. You're going to have a 2000 pound max trailer weight, which is a trailer plus the load included. Now I do recommend checking your owner's mail to make sure your vehicle can withstand that amount of weight. And you're going to want to pick the lowest number between the vehicle and the hitch. Now Kurt does require the use of stabilization straps for any non-wheeled loads. As far as the installation goes, it is a very simple installation. It comes with all the necessary hardware. There is one hole you have to drill on the driver's side. However, I do recommend getting an extra set of hands to help hold the hitch into place while you insert your hardware. Now let's give you a few measurements to help you when deciding on any hitch mount accessories you may need, such as a bike rack or cargo carrier. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost part of the bumper will be about three inches. From the ground to the top innermost part of the receiver tube will be about nine and a half inches. Now it's a good idea to get a raised shank for better ground clearance. Now let's show you how to get this installed. First thing we need to do is we need to take one of our carriage bolts and our fish wire and we're going to take our large spacer block. You're going to get three different sizes. You're going to take your larger one and over here on our passenger side we're going to do a reverse pull. We're going to push our carriage bolt up in the hole first. Then we'll push our spacer block up in the hole. And we're going to pull that back out. Next, you're going to have two half inch handle nuts. What you're going to do is you're going to bend them. You're going to slide them on each side, right inside above the hole here. Next, we'll raise our hitch into position. We'll remove our pull wire on our passenger side and we'll add a flange nut. Now with an extra set of hands, we'll get one of our carriage bolts with our conical tooth washer into one of our handle nuts. Next, we're going to remove this plastic panel here on our driver's side. You're going to have two push pin fasteners. Then you're going to have two Phillips head screws. You're going to have one here and it's going to be one right up inside the wheel well. To remove our push pin fasteners, we'll take a flathead screwdriver. And we're going to pop this center out. Once you get the center out, you can take, you can either use a flathead screwdriver or keep using it. Or if you have a trim panel tool, it's, sometimes that works a little bit better once you get the center of it out. Okay. You are going to have a third push pin. It's going to be underneath the vehicle. And we're going to have one more push pin right here on the inside of the wheel well, right next to the tire. Next thing we want to do is this hex bolt that we put in the center. We're going to tighten that up because on our driver's side, this arm, we're going to use our hitch as a template to drill our hole. But we need it tight up against there so we know exactly where to drill it. So we're going to tighten this bolt with a three quarter inch wrench. Then we're going to take a paint marker and mark our hole where our hole needs to be drilled. Now we can take our hitch back down and drill our hole. Our hole is going to be when we're finished, 1730 seconds. We're going to start with the pilot hole first. Once you have your pilot hole done, you can finish out to the proper size. So per the instructions, they want you to modify this hole to fit your carriage bolt and your spacer block. However, I have found that right at the end, 
of your bumper beam, it's open and it gives you total access to this hole. So all you would need to drill is drill your hole and you can push all your stuff through that hole. Before I do that, I wanna take some spray paint. I'm gonna spray that bare metal to make sure it doesn't rust or corrode. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my other pull wire and I'm gonna go through the hole that I just drilled. We're gonna come out this end right here. We're gonna put on our small spacer block. Follow that with our carriage bolt. Just like that. Next, you're gonna have two spacer blocks in your kit. They're gonna be the same. What you're gonna do, is you're gonna turn your hitch over and you're gonna tape one on one side and one on the other. You wanna make sure when you tape these, if you see the way I have the hitch sitting, this is the way it's gonna go up on the car. You're gonna to wanna to tape this like this. The reason is, is if you look where this is gonna be sitting, if you run it across like this, it's not gonna sit flat. You want it to sit flush inside of that. Next, we're gonna put our pull wires through our holes. Set our hitch up into place. The next set of hands holding it. We'll remove our pull wires. We'll add a flange nut on the outside. So here in the center, under the trunk pan, you're going to take one of your hex bolts, conical tooth washer. You want to make sure your conical tooth washer, the teeth are facing up toward the hitch. And you're going to bolt them into your handle nuts. Next, we'll take a three quarter inch socket. Go ahead and tighten all of our hardware up. Next, we can torque everything down to the specifications and the instructions. Next thing we need to do is we need to cut off our handle nuts. We'll just take some 10 snips and we're gonna cut them off. Try to get them as close as you can to the bottom of the trunk pan. If you want, you can take a, a hammer, hammer the other ends of the handle nut up so the sharp edges aren't hanging down. Next, we can reinstall our panel on our driver's side here. That'll do it for a look at an installation on the Curt Class 1 trailer hitch receiver, part number C. 11064.